G'day and kia ora. Altair here. Welcome to part 7 of my War Thunder skinning tutorial series. Weathering. This is it, finally. This is where we take something that looks like a cheap kit set model and try to turn it into something believable. By the time this video is finished, I'm hoping that our vengeance will look like it has just flown out of the pages of history. To do that, we'll have to ruin quite a lot of what we've already created. But that was all necessary to get us to where we are now. Ready to start the best part, the part I look forward to, but also the one that takes me the longest of all the things that I do. So let's begin. I'll start by knocking down the colours a bit. In part 4 we found the colours for our skin and I said that's a good place to start, but wind, rain, sea salt and dust take their toll on an airplane's paint. Our one is way too shiny. Let's start by getting into the end map and changing the colour to the one for flat enamel paint. Some of you will have noticed that in previous parts, when I've briefly switched to the end map, there have been way more layers in there than I've actually made. Like the C map, I made a special template file that I bring in when I first create my normal map. These layers, the ones that you see here, don't actually contain anything at all, except a colour overlay. Each has one that is set to the right colour for a particular material. So rather than having to consult an external list of RGB colour recipes, or have a colour chart that I have to turn on and turn off each time I want to select a new colour, I simply have these layers. At the moment my camo is really shiny, but I want a flat enamel, so I right click on my flat enamel layer, select copy layer style, and then right click on my all layer down here, and then select paste layer style. No mess, no fuss. I'll put a list of all the RGB values that I use for my various colours in the description below. I'm going to make my roundels and cereals just a little shinier, so I copy and paste the style from Eggshell. Like this. When you apply a style to a group, it affects all of the layers in that group. Don't forget to save the work, both as a PSD and a DDS. I'll switch back to the C map now and let's drop the strength of those panel markings. I'm going to add a hue saturation adjustment layer to the group that has all of the panel marking. Mine is called panel marking. Now there's a couple of traps for young players here. First, if you have the group expanded so that you can see all of the stuff that's in it, when you add the adjustment layer it drops it onto the first thing in the group. I want this layer to affect everything in the group, not just the first layer. So first I need to make sure that the group is rolled up click on this little triangle thing. Now with my panel markings group selected, I'll add the adjustment layer. That's where it's supposed to go. The second trap is that if you drop the saturation or colour now, it will affect every layer below it, like this. I just want to drop it for the layers in this group. To do that, I hold down Alt and click on the bottom border of the layer. Now when I drop the saturation, it only applies to that group itself. I'm going to set the saturation to minus 35. Now I'm going to go through and reduce the opacity on all of the text layers. If I was doing it to everything, I'd just change the opacity for the panel markings group. But I have a couple of things I don't want reduced. So I'm putting those things into a special subgroup called not to be changed. I'll dump the prop back and front and the fuel caps in there. I'll put all of the other groups into a group called To Be Changed, then drop the opacity of that group to about 50%. I'll do the engine soot next. For the Vengeance, there are only two large exhaust vents, one on each side. Sooty exhaust would exit here and be blown back over the wing in an arching curve. I'm going to create an exhaust stain that goes back past the trailing edge of the wing. I'll start by going into my weathering group and the engine soot subgroup inside there. I'll make a new layer and draw a long thin oval using the elliptical marquee tool. I'm starting here at this panel which is the exhaust and going all the way back to the squadron coats. Now I'm going to select a very dark brown and I'm using the gradient fill tool for ground to transparent to drag from the exhaust end to well past the letters. OK, now I'll deselect that oval and make it fuzzier using the Gaussian Blur tool. I'm setting mine to 14. Now I'll shape it by using the Warp tool. 
Edit, Transform, Warp. I'll do that a couple more times using a medium grey and a dark grey. Each will be slightly different. The dark stuff will be bigger, heavier soot particles so they will not travel as far. The lighter grey stuff will disperse faster and travel further. Now looking at the position of the exhaust pipe, the top front of the wing is also going to cop a bit of soot. So I'll add that in now. I've put my two exhaust mini stacks on their own groups and I'll copy them and position them for the wings. Now I'll use those shape layers we made way back in episode 2 to refine the edge so the exhaust doesn't spill onto surfaces that shouldn't have it. OK, I'm going to go to my grime group, add a new layer and change the foreground and background colours to two shades of brown. That one and that one. Now with my grime layer selected I'll control click on the all layer thumbnail just so I select everything that we've already created to be grimy. Then click filter render clouds. Now I'm going to add a pattern overlay to the layer. I've got all of the available patterns in my selector, but if you don't, you may need to search through them or append them all together. The pattern I'm using here is Stucco 1, set at the maximum scale. Blend mode for the effect is Overlay with an opacity of 20%. Blend mode for the layer is Overlay and the opacity is 50%. Okay, let's make it worse. I'm going to go to my Grunge layer now. There are two subgroups here, Dark over Light and Light over Dark. Technique is the same on both, so I'll pick an upper surface panel and put it in light over dark. I go to my panel lines layer, turn it up so I can actually see the lines, and then using the magic wand tool, I'll click inside the panel lines. Now I normally select more than one panel at a time, holding down shift and clicking inside each panel in turn. If you do that, just remember to make sure that no two panels are touching or overlapping. I'm going to demonstrate my technique on just one panel so you can see what I'm doing. I'm now going to my light over dark grunge layer and I'll flood fill it with light grey. Now I'm going to set the layer to a blend mode of difference. To make the grunge I want to use my eraser tool. This time I'm selecting a particular brush shape. You can download all sorts of different grunge brushes for this sort of work. I'm sorry, I downloaded mine so long ago that I can't actually remember where I got them from. This is the shape I'm using. If you can't find something similar, experiment with what you have, or if you wait a little bit, I'll show you how to make your own brushes. Okay, so with this brush selected and a size set to 50, I'm going to change how the brush appears each time I click the mouse. Using my brush control panel, I'll click on Shape Dynamics and set Jitter to 100%. Minimum diameter to 20%. Angle jitter to 100%. Roundness jitter to 50%. Control to off. Flip X and flip Y. Make sure they're both turned on. Now set the brush opacity up here to 40%. Now I'll go over the panel on multiple passes. Each one eats a little more out of the panel. I'm trying to work my way from the center outwards so there's more left at the edges than at the center. Once I have what I feel is a workable panel, then I'll move on to another set of panels. Remember not to select too many panels at once. Just do them in batches. This can take quite a bit of time, but the end result is well worth it. Okay, while I'm doing that, I might show you how to make a brush. Useful for the next two parts of weathering. I'm going to make a new document. Custom size 500 by 500 at 300 dpi. Let's turn off the background and make a new layer. In this layer, I'm going to make my brush shape. I want a line of dribbles, so that's what I'm going to draw. Now you can make any shape that you want. Okay, once you have the shape, select it using the rectangular marquee tool. 
then go up to Edit and click on Define Brush Presets. Your new brush will be at the bottom of your brush options, down here. OK, let's just check back and see how I'm going. OK, that's just about done. Now I'm going to make a copy of each of those layers. Turn off the originals. Now with a big grunge brush set to random, I'm going to go through and take a bit more out of these panels. Don't worry about overdoing it. You've still got the originals, and those are also useful if you're going to make another skin on the Vengeance and want an original grunge pattern. OK, I'm going to add some fuel spill stains near the fuel filler caps on the wings. I'll make it using three separate layers. One for a dark blurry smear, one for an orangey brown blurry smear, and one for a black stain that I made as a brush. As always, adjust the blend mode and opacity until you get something you like. For me, I like it if you can see the stains if you look for them, but they shouldn't be so prominent that they call attention to themselves. OK, now I'm going to add the smears and streaks created by flying through the air, bug strikes and small birds, mainly on the leading edges of any surface. Wings, tail, engine and gear doors. Too easy. While we're here, we should really think about some paint chips on the wing leading edge, caused by stones thrown up by the prop wash on takeoff. So let's not overdo it. The edges of the props will be chipped and worn away by the same process, so let's add that too. Maybe some oil runs and smears as well. OK, remember all that trouble we went to making the rivet layer only to turn it off? Well now we're going to reap the rewards of all that effort. Bring up the rivet layer, make a copy because we'll be partly destroying it. Set the colour overlay to pure white and turn off the stroke. Now right click on the layer and select Rasterize Layer Style. Select the blend mode to soft light. And then go to town with your eraser. We want only a few left. Still got a bit more to do. So let's add the dirt and soot stains venting out of the back of the cow flaps and the vents on the lower nose. Also some gun soot around the machine gun ports, as well as a few stains near the shell injector ports. While we're under the wing, let's add a bit of dust or mud thrown up by the wheels. Now I'm going to put in some streaks on the leading edges of all the control surfaces. Ailerons, flaps, elevators and rudder. Some hinge grease smears in there as well. How about some extra weathering where all those grubby hands and boots come into contact with the airframe? On the wing and around the canopy.
also on the hand grips and footholds. Rain marks where all the dirt and crap from the canopy wash down the fuselage when the beast is parked. Oh, and speaking of crap, birds would definitely use that HF antenna line as a perch, so... Yeah. Okay, nearly done. Now I'll select the weathering group and make a duplicate of it in the end map. I won't use everything, but I will change the exhaust and gun smoke to flat. I'll also give the grime and grunge layers that same treatment. Stone chips I'm going to set to gloss enamel. I'm not actually using the metal colours. It doesn't work well with really small features like stone chips. They kind of twinkle and glow, so I'm sticking with just shiny. One last and very important thing to remember about skinning in general and weathering in particular. It's as much art as it is science. Yes, you have to understand the science behind light and how air flows over a wing to get the arching exhaust right, and that soot is heavier than smoke so that it travels less distance. But in the end, it's all about what your skin looks like in the game. So trust the science of painting to get you into the right general area, but go with your gut on the fine tuning. If you think the colours look just a little too much, then pop an adjustment layer on the problem and desaturate it. Too dark? Lighten it. Too sharp? Blur it. Do whatever it takes to get the thing looking right. Okay, let's see the difference now. Okay, that's more like it. Now we've got ourselves a decent skin. Next time, we'll be shooting holes in everything and setting up the damage files. See you then. Kia kaha.